So we're shifting now from football where we are wondering if it will be an all-German final in the UEFA Champions League or will Real Madrid uh, go through to face uh, the Borussia Dortmund team in the final on the 1st of June. Let's go now to cricket because it's no secret that for many admirers of the gentleman's game in Jamaica that the sport on the island has stagnated over the past few years from the Jamaica Scorpions winning no matches in regional cricket in 2023 to the island hosting no international cricket uh, since 2022, no CPL matches since 2019, losing the Jamaica Talawas franchise and what many find most damning, not offering a bid to host any matches in the upcoming 2024 ICC T20 World Cup. Many fans have now grown frustrated in the country. There has been change made, however, with Dr. Donovan Bennett named as the new Jamaica Cricket Association president or voted in as the new president, having beaten former president Wilfred Billy Heaven in the JCA election on the 25th of April. But the new president is not the only one seeking to positively impact Jamaica's cricket. This as two young men have founded Cricket Cave, an organization which is aiming to redefine the nation's cricket scene. And those men are here to tell us more. Atishay Man Singh and David Henriquez, welcome to the Sports Max Zone. Great to have you, you gentlemen, on. Thank um, you, Well, talk to us first about this, this uh, project and uh, where the ideas came from. Well, I think David and myself are cricket, former cricket players who now play for fun and just cricket fans. And we've seen the trajectory of cricket in Jamaica over the past 10 years and realized that it's time for somebody to step in from a personal and passionate standpoint. And I think we both fit the criteria to ensure that we can mix business with sport. Yeah, um, I'm told that part of what you're doing here will be unveiled in the warm-up matches that the West Indies will play against South Africa at, at Sabina Park ahead of the T20 World Cup. So we can talk a little bit more about that. In, in the next couple of minutes. But sure. I want to put on the discussion platform the reasons why you think cricket is struggling and why, why fans are losing contact with the sport. Because I can tell you, when I was growing up in the 1970s, um, I played cricket on the street regularly. And it was normal for you to see youngsters playing cricket on the street. It was, it was popular. Everyone wanted to be Michael Holding. Everyone wanted to be Lawrence Rowe, Vivian Richards. Uh, that, that isn't happening at the moment. I'm not sure how that can change. But what are some of the things from your standpoint as a young man and, and Henrik is himself as a young person? What do you see as the reasons for cricket's current struggle for impact among the younger generation? Well, the lack of cricket being played in Jamaica, even from the international standpoint. We, don't, we haven't had CPL here since 2019, as you stated. And these, these are events that will show youngsters that cricket is fun. Cricket has an economic impact, not just on you, but on a nation. And I think as a nation, we haven't done enough to ensure that cricket is played at Sabina Park. I think it's known more as a football stadium right now than a cricket stadium. I mean, JPL has shown that you can get a crowd at Sabina Park. And their business model has, has filled it up. We've seen it over the weekend that there's been people there. So I just don't think there's been enough cricket played and there's not been enough investment in ensuring that there's a good developmental program to ensure that youngsters can get into cricket in Jamaica. Yeah, I, I want to counter that though by suggesting that even in the past months when we were discussing Jamaica not bidding for a, a World Cup spot, people who were supporting the government's stance in not taking on that, that financial investment suggested that they, they agreed with it because cricket is dying. And someone said that their gym, nobody talks about cricket. Everybody talks about football. How will you respond to that? I find it a bit difficult to hear that cricket is dying because it's, let's take CPL, for example. Yes. In Guyana, over 10 games, the economic impact was 101 million US dollars. In Barbados, let's take it to five games, the impact was 40 million US dollars. And these economic drivers are coming from the organization spending they're coming from when tourists come to spend, and they're coming from the media rights. These are all trickle-down effects to the local economies. The Nazi man, the Airbnbs in Kingston. So a lot of these people, tourism is not just in the North Coast. We have tourism to have in Kingston. Yeah. And cricket brings that tourism to the local people of Jamaica. Yeah, so David, my question is for you. 
How will this work, this Cricket Cave initiative? So the Cricket Cave initiative, uh, for starters with the, the upcoming game, um, our intention is to work in conjunction with JCA to create an, an atmosphere, an environment for, for families, for people to say, all right, you know, we're going to make the effort to go out and watch this cricket and to just bring that vibe and that feeling that has been lost for the last couple of years back. Um, I mean, the last time we had cricket here was in August 2022, um, and that was just one game. And, you know, there was a fair turnout at Sabina, but nothing of, you know, the cricket of, of, of past. I mean, um, you know, me as a, a, a middle-aged uh, adult. Um, oh, you are. I've <laughs> seen, seen Sabina Park full yeah. for so many years of my life that, I mean, Atishé is a fair bit younger than me, and he's probably not seen it to that extent. And so you can just imagine the kids who are now attending school who are interested in cricket have never seen Sabina Park full. Yeah. How do you have the passion driving you as a young cricketer if you've never seen your local stadium full? Yeah. You know, so things like that. So our aim now is to try and just get people back but into how? Savannah Park. We're, we're going to tag on, you know, our, 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 our friends, our groups, family, and just put some groundwork in, you know, advertising, you know, our section, the fan zone. Tell um, me a bit just, about the fan zone, because I find that to be interesting. It gives me a Trini Posse vibe, like in Trinidad. You've been at the yeah. Right. So will it be something like that? Yeah, it's going to be something like very similar. Like a party similar. stand? Yeah, it's, gonna be, it's going to be like a party stand. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, you have your party stand here, you know, kids can't attend. Um, so we want to create that party vibe, but we want to open it up to the family. So it, it's going to be a full on family vibe. There's going to be fun. There's going to be kicks. There's going to be lots of gimmicks. Um, but we're there to support West Indies. We're there to support cricket on a whole. Um, so we're just going to try and make it as fun and as comfortable an environment as possible. Yeah, another initiative that you plan to explore, the indoor facility. Yeah. Tell me a bit more about that. So we are taking over the indoor nets at Sabina Park uh, and we will be refurbishing it to, to get it as close to an uh, international standard as possible. Um, and then as, as we progress to launch an academy, which will push um, the growth of, of, of cricketers from a young age, it will bridge that gap. Um, I mean, we know cricket is not cheap to, to get started in. Yeah, so we'll sure. bridge that gap so that anybody can come in and, and, and play. And the, the academy will bridge that financial gap for, for many so that we can get in, get people training with, with international standard coaches. And at that point, young coaches who can garner experience from these senior coaches. And it will help us across the board. Um, so people will have the, the ability to play more cricket. So I'm getting a coaching clinic vibe. Yeah, definitely coaching clinic, but just also, you know, the, the ability for, for people to show up and, and play some recreational cricket and just enjoy cricket again. Yeah. yeah. David, if your venture with the South Africa practice matches with the West Indies at Sabina Park, maybe two or three matches, yeah. if, if, the, if that comes up to be hugely successful and, and you get the stadium Sabina Park packed and so on, do you think it will trigger the thought that Jamaica missed out on, on being a part of the World Cup. It has to. Uh, if it doesn't, <laughs> I think we have much bigger problems than we even thought of. But it has to. It has to. Yeah. Uh, and then at that point, we need to find other ways to get more cricket here, other cricket. Where, even if it's not going to be international level cricket, there needs to be more cricket happening on a consistent basis. Sabana Park can't be known as a football ground. I'm sorry, it can't be. Yeah, well, the yeah. second leg of the semi-finals of the Jamaica Premier League will be played <laughs> there. So, 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 so. <laughs> but with a final move to the National Stadium, <laughs> which I think you two would suggest that that's where football belongs, yeah, at the National of course, Stadium. Of course. All right. Uh, Atishé, well, your brother plays for Jamaica. Yes. And uh, you have been steeped in cricket based on your, your family and so on. Definitely. Um, talk to us about inspiring a young teenager now to look at cricket as... As a, as a future endeavor because I know that, you know, many, many years ago it was felt that cricket didn't pay and uh, to aspire to be a cricketer would mean that you would sacrifice your financial po options or financial possibilities. But we are seeing now based on the, the, the salaries that cricketers can earn that, that cricket could be viable financially for youngsters. Definitely. I think 
with the recent payment structure now with the franchise system in regional cricket, just by being a Jamaican cricketer, it's, it's showing now that cricket is a viable option and that you're receiving returns a lot earlier than you used to before. I mean, the starting, there's a C, B and A contract. And for the, a C contract is higher than a starting salary for a lot of regular jobs that are out there in this world. And it's not to say that, for, as you can see on the screen now, it's not to say that getting, to the, getting there is easy. But the fact of the matter is 15 players are contracted to one of those contracts every single year. And there's more Jamaicans the, other than the 15 that are still contracted in other territories. The academy, you have CCC, you have some players playing for Leewood, some players playing in different areas. So this is just simply by playing cricket in Jamaica. And it's not that you have to be old to play at this level. Justin Beckford just made his debut for the Scorpions. Kurt McKenzie came out of high school. Ravman Powell and Chadwick Walton were both in university when they played for West Indies attending UE. Yeah. So it's, it's a viable option and there's money to be made in cricket just by playing in Jamaica. Yeah, and of course if you're good enough in T20 cricket, there are IPL possibilities. Well, this is yeah. just by playing in Jamaica. I mean, yeah. a lot of players go and play in minor leagues in America. A lot yeah. of them go to leagues all over the world. And I think with cricket growing in America, with them hosting this World Cup with the West Indies, it's showing that everywhere else sees an importance in cricket. Yeah. Do you think the, the, the Major League cricket that is beginning to um, be launched in the USA now is, is, is threatening West Indies cricket? I think it's, it poses a big threat. I mean, yes. we saw that they discussed it in the CWI conference that they just recently had. Yes. And Major League announced their dates, which is clashing with the 100. So now we're seeing them take on another big T20 league. And I think CPL has to be a bit careful because if a lot of international players choose MLC over CPL, we're going to see our local tournament kind of get a big hit. Yeah. So I do think it poses a threat, but I still think that nowhere, nowhere in the world has cricket sweetened on the West Indies. We still add that flair, we have that party vibe. And it's the biggest party in it's sport. It's the biggest party in sports. So I think <laughs> that slogan alone tells you what our cricket is about. And that's what Cricket Cave is about. We're about to make cricket comfortable, fun, and bring back that party vibe to Sabina Park and just cricket on a whole because even in the, in the indoor nets, we'll have a lounge area. Yes. We're going to have places for people to come and watch cricket together. And during the World Cup, we'll have game watch-alongs. Just, mm. just, just to provide a funness around cricket, basically. Okay. Well, uh, Atishe and, and David, I, I, like, I like what I'm hearing and for people who genuinely love cricket because we were steeped in cricket as a, as a, as a culture in the Caribbean 40 or 50 years ago. And somewhere along the line, it's been, it's yeah. been declining, and we'd like to see um, things get, get back to, to where it was. And I, I wish you luck, and I, I would want to congratulate you on the initiative that you're showing here, and hope that you'll be successful with it. Thank, Thank you very much. And we'll be in touch. Thank Definitely. You. Thank you very much. Okay. Atishe and, and David talking some cricket, and hopes for the resusc resuscitation of uh, cricket in Jamaica. And at Sabina Park, we'll be back with more on The Zone after this.